Hello friends, welcome to YouTube channel Electronics for You. Friends, in this video, I will talk about one of the most important topic in ele basic electrical engineering that is electromagnetic induction. The topics covered here are what is electromagnetic induction, production of induced EMF currents, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and Lane's law. Now, let us talk what the what is the electromagnetic induction? Here, electromagnetic induction was discovered by Faraday, Michael Faraday in 1831. And electromagnetic induction is a current produced by, produced because of the voltage or EMA produced due to the changing magnetic field. This is the definition of electromagnetic induction here you will know that it is the current produced because of the voltage production due to changing magnetic fields means there will be the change in magnetic field and this change in magnetic field will cause the current and that's why it is known as electromagnetic induction changing magnetic field now we, uh, we said here that this production of emf is due to the change in magnetic field. Now, this change in magnetic field can be generated by two different ways. First, it can be achieved by a conductor put in a particular position and magnetic field keeps varying. Note here that the magnetic field keeps varying here and that is the first way to produce electromagnetic induction. The second way is to, we can keep magnetic field stationary and conductor is moving. Here is the experimental setup for the electromagnetic induction production. We will have a loop of coil which is directly connected to a galvanometer. Here galvanometer will indicate whether the current uh, is flowing through this conductor or not. Now we are having a bar magnet and if we move the magnet to and fro here, there is a change in magnetic field. We know that the magnet is having li lines of forces and these lines of forces that is magnetic field will cut here through uh, by the conductor and if there is a change in magnetic field, there is a deflection in this galvanometer and that is the experimental setup for the electromagnetic induction. This electromagnetic induction can be produced only if the magnet or a conductor is moving. If stationary magnetic there if magnet is there no emf will be produced but if we move the magnet then there is a deflection in the galvanometer just like this here we can see that the magnet is moving and here is the solenoid that is the uh, coil of wire which is connected to which is uh, uh, wounded on a solenoid here and due to that there is a deflection in the galvanometer indicating that there is a flow of current here. Now that is the first way to produce the electro, uh, the, that is the first way to produce the current here. Second way, if we move the coil, if we move the coil, the deflection in the galvanometer will be there and that is here. Okay, here instead of moving the magnet we are moving the coil or we can say we are moving the conductor and that conductor is cutting magnetic lines of forces or magnetic field is changed here and therefore there is the production of induced emf that's why we can conclude here that emf is induced in the coil only when there is a change in flux in the coil whenever there is change in the flux in the coil then the electromagnetic induction uh, will be there and the current will flow through this conductor. Now, uh, this is actually the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Again, same experimental setup is there. The co coil of wire is there. It is connected to galvanometer and magnet is kept moving. And due to that, uh, we can say that Faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction, it states that whenever the flux linked with the conductor changes, EMF is induced in the conductor. Here, the flux linked with the conductor is changing and therefore, the EMF is induced in the conductor. This is the first Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Now, let us talk about the second law. 
it is it will give the magnitude of the emf induced it states that the magnitude of emf induced is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linked with the conductor it means that these conductors this uh, the, uh, the change of this flux will produce more emf because it is directly proportional to the emf here e is directly proportional to d phi by dt and we can write therefore e is equals to n times d phi by dt where e is magnitude of emf induced in the conductor n is the number of turns here these are the number of turns in this case it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so in this case it is 6 similarly there may be n number of turns so uh, again this emf will be dependent on number of turns more turns will be there and therefore more emf will be induced and last one that is the faraday's law of electromagnetic magnetic induction it is the rate of change of flux more change in uh, flux will be there so more emf will be induced this is faraday's law or second law this law gives the magnitude of emf induced in the conductor now let us talk about lane's law that is the last law uh, last topic here actually lane's law gives the direction of emf induced in the process and it states that it is always such that it tends to flow the magnetic magnetic current which opposes the cause of producing it whichever the cause of producing it it will always try to oppose it that is the magnitude of emf induced in the conductor is given by e is equals to minus n d phi by dt look here that the negative sign is introduced here and that negative sign indicates that the direction of emf induced is opposite to the cause producing it now what is the cause producing it definitely this is the magnet okay this magnet is the cause producing the emf induced in the conductor and it is explained further now the, uh, now let us again again assume that this is the coil of conductor and a galvanometer is connected there and this is our bar magnet we are moving here if we move the bar magnet here the conductor current will flow through this coil and we know that whenever there is a flow of current in a conductor the magnet is generated there because the flow of current will produce the magnetic field here and therefore this magnetic field is generated here and now look at the direction of this magnet here the north pole is there and in this case also the north pole is generated in this side okay now we know that these are the same poles and therefore the coil will repel the magnet okay and that's that's the lane's law the force of repulsion will oppose the movement of bar magnet toward the coil we are moving bar magnet toward the coil and here the electromagnet of this coil is just repel uh, repelling this magnet and therefore we can say that this force of repulsion will oppose the movement of magnet in the coil now let us assume the second condition when n pole of the magnet is moved away in this case we are uh, we were moving toward the magnet uh, toward the conductor now if we are moving away from the magnet in this case okay here we are moving away this magnet to this conductor and now look at this now the electromagnet will change its direction and south pole will be generated here and in this case the force of attraction will oppose the movement of bar magnet away from the coil what what is here this is north pole this is south pole definitely the coil attracts the magnet here and what we are doing we are moving magnet away from the coil and therefore we can say that this force of attraction will oppose the movement of bar magnet away from the coil and this is the Lane's law and note here that due to Lane's law we write E is equals to minus n d phi by dt that is the, there is a change in the sign from the Faraday's uh, law of electromagnetic induction that is second law of uh, uh, second Faraday's law.
Okay, uh, that's all for the day. Thank you.